If you've been following my channel, you would have noticed the increased talk about Linux phones. And some of you have actually said that Linux phones have no chance of getting adoption and that past attempts have failed. First, why is the path so difficult for these Linux phone projects? And let's see if these projects have a chance. Let's talk about that next. <laughs> Okay, full disclosure, I myself have started using a Linux phone, although what I did was convert an older Android phone into using Linux. So you might say I'm already tainted here with my evaluation. And let's not bring up the comment about Android being Linux, because come on, we're talking about GNU Linux here. To be honest with you, I'm never attached to any particular platform. I've been using Microsoft Windows and even DOS from the very beginning of that. And then seven years ago, I shifted to MacBooks for my desktop and Linux for my servers. Today I'm on a 100% Linux diet. My desktop is Linux, my servers are Linux, my phone is Linux. And this is the Internet Privacy Channel, so you already know what my reasons are. It came as a surprise to me many months ago that people interested in privacy were all clamoring for Linux phones. I sadly believed before that that few people really cared about privacy and my years of diet drives against Facebook has been regularly ignored by many. So I was surprised at the number of people who were initially following the progress of the Librem 5 and became backers of that project. And the thousands of people found on forums like Reddit talking about the Librem 5. Then I researched another upcoming phone that just started in 2019, and it's the Pine phone. Now, this phone was announced as being quite a bit cheaper than the Librem 5. And again, I was surprised at the interest in the phone. They just did their pre-release sale of an early version, and they committed to a 3,000 unit initial supply. The Pine 64 company is projecting a consumer release of around 50,000 units for 2020. Even Purism, the makers of the Librem 5, initially announced an intent to make around 3,000 phones max, and I'm gathering that they're preparing for a higher number than their updated number of 10,000 phones. And mind you, the Librem 5 is not an inexpensive phone at $700 before tax. So if you all catch the drift here, it appears like there's some pent-up demand. And yes, I ordered both a Pine phone and a Librem 5. Now, it should be obvious to those who follow my channel that when I talk about Linux phones, a lot of people watch my videos. So, there's this constant demand for information about this topic and one that I happen to know a lot about. Now, I'm guessing that the reason people are interested in Linux phones is for the reason I am. I'm really tired of having a phone that spies on me all day. I've made many videos and live streams over the years explaining how these phones and apps have been breaking our privacy in very specific ways. I'm really tired of my phone guessing where I want to go or selling my location data or just intruding on me in very extreme ways. Apparently I'm not alone. That's my guess. If you're interested in Linux phones for a different reason, please leave a comment below so I can understand. I want this to be a conversation, not just me talking about this like I'm the world's expert. I'm not. But it's a topic that interests me and we can all inform each other. So I will try to analyze if Linux phones can succeed, but remember that the final answer will come from all of you. One of the reasons given about why Linux phones will not succeed is because they've tried in the past and all attempts have failed. Some of the early attempts go way back. For example, one of the earliest attempts was in 2011 by Nokia. They tried to sell MAMO, which was a true Linux device. I don't even know how to pronounce that, but we're going to go with that. But we're talking about 2011 here. I don't even think people for focus on privacy issues in 2011. Facebook didn't even become a big spying behemoth until around then. In fact, that's about the time they went public. Heck, I myself was still on Facebook in 2011. So back then, the only reason to go to Linux was not for privacy, but because you were a Linux geek. Again, to remind you all, I'm finding that the initial interest in the Librem 5 
as a Linux phone was because of privacy. In fact, the design of the Librem 5 is completely focused on privacy with open source software, hardware kill switches, and no spying. Another very noteworthy project was Ubuntu Touch. This project was started by Canonical, the company responsible for the Ubuntu distro of Linux. And again, this project was started in 2011. And Canonical dumped the project because of lack of market interest in 2017. And let me remind you that in 2017, it was software that had no hardware. So they could only make it as a prototype. There was no product to immediately promote. And if you know about the difficulties of converting current phones to a different operating system, you'll understand. Today, the Ubuntu Touch project is very much alive. It was taken over by UB ports. And I myself am a user of Ubuntu Touch on a Nexus 5 and a OnePlus One. And yes, there are probably only a few thousand users of Ubuntu Touch at the moment but understand the limitations. In the US, Ubuntu Touch is currently only installable on a Nexus 5 and a OnePlus One. There are a couple of extra models available in Europe, but that's it. So that alone will stump its growth. A Nexus 5 phone is circa 2014. So this is an old phone, and though it works, it doesn't compare to the speed of my iPhone 10, which is already a couple of years old. Here's the change though, folks. There are now five upcoming mobile Linux operating systems in the works. And even more additional distros are doing beta testing of this now. The five projects in advanced stages are Ubuntu Touch, Post Market OS with Plasma Mobile, Pure OS with Fosh, Luna OS, and Sailfish OS. And someone just pointed out that Manjaro Linux is doing testing now, and the mainline Linux distros like Debian and Arch are also potentially going to support the use of Plasma Mobile on a Pine phone. And I'm not even counting the very popular Kai OS, which is used in a lot of cheap phones and which did originate from the Linux kernel like Android. And I don't include that in the same way that I don't include Android because they're not GNU Linux. So I don't know. I'm just sniffing the environment here. So many projects, new projects are suddenly crowding to this field of Linux phones. Someone must be sensing that there is a demand. Well, speaking for myself, I've already explained in videos why I'm leaning towards Linux phones. I find myself with no alternative. The mobile environment's now such an essential part of our lives, yet we're being controlled by only two market players. And these companies alone can determine how much spying is done on each one of us. Even Apple must sense an undercurrent of a rebellion when it uses a fake marketing ploy that says, iPhone is privacy. What a crock of you know what. We've also seen the EU go against the big spy companies with the GDPR privacy laws. So that's a sign that people are concerned. Of course, I've been talking about the spying and extent of it for many years now. And I was always asked to show my tinfoil hat. So it is my conclusion that it is privacy that is driving the demand for Linux phones. The open source nature of Linux promotes privacy. In fact, I recently made my own app Brax.me open source and I'm hoping and I'm hoping it will be used as a privacy social media tool by the Linux phone community. This group of people think like I do. Okay, so I've established a theory that there's a demand for Linux phone because this offers more privacy. But bad implementation of this will not necessarily mean Linux phones will succeed. In fact, what does success mean? There are 2 billion phones made each year. Am I expecting that 100 million phones might be Linux? Heck no. I don't think there's a chance of that. At least not in the near future. There has to be many changes before that can happen and it will take years. However, Linux phones don't have to sell in the millions for it to survive. Success in my mind means sustainability. Is it something that will stay with us for the long term and not be terminated projects like Nokia Memo in the original Ubuntu Touch? Let me talk about some of the headwinds with convincing average users to use Linux phones. First, in a way, it's no longer just about the phone, but about the app. Users don't necessarily think about Android versus iOS other than for the style reasons. But as far as functional need, most people will say, can I run 
Instagram, Facebook, WhatsApp, YouTube, Snapchat, Waze, and of course the major players will only have their apps work on Android and iOS. And you can see that the majority of people who use Facebook, Instagram, and Snapchat aren't particularly concerned about privacy. They're not concerned about spying phones, so they're not the target market. The next headwind is the functionality of the software. I'm using Ubuntu Touch right now, which by the way is the only phone option currently working that allows me to use the phone and still have access to Linux apps and web apps. And you can probably get close to the same thing if you're running KaiOS. And KaiOS, by the way, is immensely popular, though I don't know if users of that platform are concerned about privacy. I think it's used only because it does not require expensive hardware, so it's used in a lot of cheap phones. So it's about to touch as easy to use as Android or iOS. I'd be lying to you if I said that. No, there is a learning curve. Apps aside, it doesn't work the same as Android and iOS. And the UX favors small icons and small text, which can be a turnoff to some people. For me, if the choice is about learning a different interface versus losing privacy, I'm happy to work with learning something new. But that's me. Now, this will change as Ubuntu Touch itself gets improved and the other options like PureOS, LunaOS, Plasma Mobile get completed. The next headwind is the functionality of the Linux phone itself. I read an old article about the potential permanent demise of Linux phones. This was written in 2017. And one of the reasons given was that Linux phones will not have phone calling capability. In other words, a phone that cannot make a phone call. That reviewer claimed that Deliberum 5 was intended to be used only with voice over IP. Obviously, the writer didn't really research this well. There is already a phone calling driver in Linux and it was made for the Nokia memo in 2011. And it was made by Intel. This, li this library is called Ophono. In fact, that same library was used by UB Ports to demonstrate that a Pine phone can make a phone call. And I'm certain that's the same driver used on the Librem 5. This driver is part of the standard Linux kernel going back a while. So something as basic as phone calling is not an issue. Another major issue recently is all the incompatibility with Bluetooth. I worked with Bluetooth, I think, as far back as the 90s, and it had so many incompatibilities then. Now we are at Bluetooth version 5.1, and most devices still ship with Bluetooth 4. In any case, Linux has always had a history of incompatibilities with Bluetooth. This driver is called Blues and has been part of the Linux kernel for a while. I don't know why this is problematic. Maybe the maintainers of this driver on the Linux kernel has information. Definitely Bluetooth is more important on the phone devices and this is a hardware limitation that has to be solved. Hopefully community demand will make this move faster. The other problem on the hardware side is that most of the hardware built is for Android. I mentioned that 2 billion phones are made every year and most of these are Android. This also means pre-made motherboards, pre-built with particular SOC, system on a chip, and all of these configured to work for Android. In fact, the development of Android drivers is part of the process of building Android devices. Because of the volume, these devices don't have much variation and the motherboards are cheap. So here comes a small company like Purism or Pine64 going to companies like Qualcomm and Broadcom and saying, we want a custom motherboard. We're gonna build 100,000 phones. Well, it doesn't take a genius to figure out that these companies have no clout, not against two billion phones. So the small companies are left with crumbs. They have to look at what's available in the market and use that, mostly repurposing what already exists. In the case of Pine64, the builders of the Pine phone, they already had a product called the Rock 64, which is an alternative single board computer to the Raspberry Pi. If you haven't heard of the Raspberry Pi, it must be the most popular computer model of all time. I think there's more Raspberry Pi sold than any other computer. And it runs Linux, and it costs only 35 bucks. Well, plus tax and duties. So Pine64 already had the motherboard and circuitry for a Raspberry Pi light computer. All they had to do was incorporate the cell motor. It already had Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. 
and they just attach the modem to the USB bus. Simple. Done. This is in contrast to what Purism had to do with a Librem 5 phone. They had to find a CPU, design a motherboard, and incorporate a cell baseband modem and Wi-Fi with Bluetooth. There will be other companies with the same capability as Pine64 in the future. But what's so neat about Pine64 is how they are releasing the Pine phone at a cost that just matches a Raspberry Pi with a screen. And given that the Rock 64 already works with Linux means they didn't have to do as much work on the basic stuff. This is the kind of innovation that can be possible if the demand is there. And they managed to overcome the limitations of not being able to have clout with a Qualcomm or a Broadcom. So this is looking better. I don't have my Pine phone yet. It's coming soon, a few weeks. And I don't have my Librem 5 yet. It's coming way later in 2020. But my wish list to make this succeed better is to improve the hardware based on the specs of the two phones that I just mentioned. These two improvements might convince average users to jump over if the software becomes available. The two items on my wish list are one, a faster CPU and two, faster Wi-Fi. The current CPUs used for these two upcoming models are abysmal compared to flagship Android and iOS models. Millennials will definitely complain about this. Currently, these new models are running at speeds closer to the Raspberry Pi. It will take some demand before these companies can afford to use faster CPUs. So I understand it's a chicken and an egg thing, but someone will have to take a risk. Also, both Linux phones do not support the AC standard in Wi-Fi, so Wi-Fi will be slower than almost all new phones. And a final point that is not in the crosshairs in a big way yet is that if the CPUs are faster and Linux mobile has better support for desktop apps, then this could bring in the Linux geeks to do Linux geek things on their phone. And that was the original reason for the demand for the Nokia Memo. I have to admit that the geeky part of me is excited by that. So in conclusion, there are headwinds, but I'm starting to feel like there will be a solid base to start from. At the moment, there's not even a single running new product. That's about to change in January. And for those handful that have a Librem 5, I don't count that. A few released phones are not going to impact the world. We need to see the effect of bigger numbers. 2020 will be an interesting year. Maybe I'll be doing a video in late 2020 discussing how the Linux mobile project has flopped. But my gut feel is that I will see the reverse. The drive for privacy is much too strong and getting stronger. There's one thing that can kill Linux phones immediately, and that is if Android and iOS adopt true privacy-oriented practices, including hardware kill switches. This is incredibly unlikely, so I am not holding my breath. So Linux Mobile will continue. Thanks for watching and find out more details about these Linux phones and Linux Mobile OSs in my other videos. Hit that subscribe button and give it a thumbs up. That's really important and it's appreciated.